part uh, for us. We're going to have worship. The worship team is going to be playing. Uh, there's going to be tents with different activities. There is a sign-up sheet back there for us to participate with, okay? Um, any birthdays? Well, there aren't any. Yes, Mrs. B here. She's celebrating her birthday. All right, we wish you happy, happy more. Okay. Uh, coming up. Oh, happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday to you as well. Anyone else? Let us know now. Okay, amen. Praise God. I want to try something with you guys. But I need silence. I need you to close your eyes. Please, just close your eyes. I need you to do this. Take a short breath and let it out through your mouth. Take another longer breath through your nose and let it out again. Now I need you to fill your lungs. Take it in a deep one. And let it out. Open your eyes. Imagine how Adam and Eve felt when they got that first breath from God. That first breath of life. First breath of hope. That's how we should be every day. That first breath that takes away anxiety, pressure, pain, the worries of the day. And as we take in that deep breath, we say, thank you, God. Let's try it. Let's practice that. Thank you, God. And let him deal with the situation in your life. He owns it. He knows the answer. What we have to do is surrender to him. Amen? Hello, everyone. After next week, after the youth fundraiser, we are going to be transforming the church for the VBS. It is a Middle Ages castle theme, and we are in dire need of all hands on deck. So anyone that can stay after the youth meal, we could certainly use you for a little while to make this happen. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. Suzanne's coming up here. She's going to lead us in the word. If you stand and... Good morning. We're in Isaiah today. Isaiah 28, join me. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation, firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be disturbed. Thank you, Jesus. God's so good. Can you say amen? I'm not here to attend a funeral today. I'm here to let you know that Jesus is alive and he's alive forevermore. And I want to remind you, even though I say this often to you, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And today, he wants to touch your life and he wants to touch mine. And I don't know about you, but I, I love the touch of the Lord. Can you say amen? And the way he touches us is by the Holy Spirit, okay? And as we are open to the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden he just begins to work it down deep inside of us. How many have experienced that in a service? Even during worship where you just, all of a sudden you sense the presence of God and he just touched you in a mighty and powerful way. He wants to do that today if we'll allow him. Amen? Amen. Now we can just sit down and we can just say, Oh, the same old, same old, here we are. I'm here to tell you, you need to connect. And when you connect with Jesus, 
by the Holy Spirit. Boy, oh boy, something happens. There is a life. And Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? I want life, but I want life more abundant, don't you? I know where to get it. Hallelujah. It's a person. He's alive forevermore. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. He's good. He is good. All right. We're going to invite the Spirit of God. We're not trying to put him in a false position. We want to come under his government because he always points us to Jesus. And I've told you this so many times, but sometimes repetition is important. He puts a face on the Father. Can you say amen? amen. Together now, dear Spirit of God, Spirit here, God. I here I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. I've, opened my heart. I've opened my heart. Help me now, Help me now. to worship. Come upon me with your anointing. Set me free in your spirit. Let the joy of the Lord rise up within me. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
up and forgot Let your glory go on and on and Impossible things in your name They shall be done Unstoppable God Let your glory go on and on
ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good. Oh, you are good.
Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, hallelujah. God's so good. Amen. Praise God. We're going to receive the offering this morning. We encourage you to be faithful with your giving. Your tithe belongs to the Lord. Not only are we going to take up one offering, which would be the tithes and offerings, but we're going to also receive a offering and offering for the building fund, okay? And uh, what comes in for that offering goes right on the principal. It's over and above what we would pay monthly as far as our mortgage payment. So please take note of that. And this offering I'm talking about for the building fund and property is a walking offering. In other words, after the ushers pass you by, then if you get up and bring it and deposit it over here, please. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. Praise God. I've enjoyed worship this morning, haven't you? God is so good. He is. We do have some prayer concerns we're going to lift before the Lord. And um, we need to pray for Denise. Some of you remember Denise. She has blisters on her face. We need to ask God uh, to help her to receive healing. Let's believe God for healing for her. Uh, Kyle Dries suffered a stroke. We need to pray for his healing from that stroke. And we need to pray for deliverance for him. Let's just believe God for him today. Uh, Willie, we hope to see him in the near future. He's doing much better. But let's continue to pray for his healing. We want to pray for Norma today for her healing and also the fact that she'll be relocating. So that means she's got to find a place down in York to live. And she needs to find a good church where there will be a network where they will uh, simulate her into uh, their uh, healing and everything else that they want to share with her, okay? We have Ruby here. That We have Ruby here. We'll get to you in a minute, okay? We got Ruby here that needs healing as well. And we got Angel that needs healing. And then we're praying for an assistant pastor, okay? All right, Norma. Oh, okay. All right. I'm. Oh, praise God. All right. You're going to hear from Norma later on than this afternoon. I know that. That's all I'll say at this point, okay? You're going to hear a lot from her later on, okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, one of these gentlemen is going to lift their voice in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we give you all the honor and glory today, Lord. We just thank you for your presence here among us, Lord. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for your omnipotence, your omniscience. Lord, we just thank you for your love for us, Lord, your mercy and your grace that you show us every day, Lord. For these requests, Lord, are numerous here today, Lord, but there's nothing too big or too small that you're not concerned with and that you're not able to deal with, Lord. We pray for Denise, for her healing, for Kyle Dries, for Willie, for Norma, Lord, as she relocates, be with her and continue to heal her, Lord. For Ruby, for healing, Angel, healing, and for an assistant pastor, Lord, we pray that you'll meet that need as well, Lord God. We just thank you that you care about every detail of our lives, Lord God, and we just give you all the honor and glory for that, Lord, and now as we give back a small portion of what you've given us, Lord, we just pray that you use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. We give you all the honor and glory in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. God's so good. Amen. We're going to get into the Word of God for a little bit while, and then we have something special that's going to be happening this afternoon, and so we'll leave it there at this moment. But uh, if you'll stand, we're going to continue our study about the armor of God. And uh, as I have shared with you before, I will share with you again that the Apostle Paul is in prison in Rome. He's an ambassador in bonds according to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 20. And he's writing an epistle to the church at Ephesus. He cares about these Ephesian believers. God had used him to plant the church there. And certainly he wanted them to understand what spiritual warfare was all about. And as he was thinking along that particular line, I believe the Spirit of God uh, began to speak to him as he would look at this Roman soldier and observe the armor that he was wearing. And God gave him revelation on how certainly in the spiritual realm we have spiritual armor that not only protects us but helps us to be the kind of Christian and soldier that God wants us to be. And so we're going to talk about the sword of the Spirit. Let me just say this. Whenever you would think about the word sword back in that day, a Roman soldier knew about five different swords, okay? One was very heavy. In fact, uh, you that follow baseball know that uh, you have someone that's in the batter's box, but you have the next person up, and they're in this circle. And a lot of times what they do is they put a weight on their bat and swing it back and forth so when they get up, the bat that they use will seem much lighter, okay? And their swing will be much quicker. Well, they had a practice sword that they would use, and that would be a heavy one, and that would just build up their arms and would make every other sword seem very light. We're going to talk about a sword today that I believe you are going to hear, and it really is representative of what we really experience spiritually, okay? And the question I would ask you before we pray would be this. How would you like God to give you a weapon that can rip to shreds the devil's strategies against you? How would you like God to give you that kind of a weapon? Well, can I tell you? That's exactly what he has done. And so I want you to look up here because uh, Ephesians 6.17 tells us something. It declares that God has given you the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen? How many can say, God's given me a sword today? Yeah. All right, we're going to talk about that, okay? And I want you to note that the word sword is underlined because we're going to talk about that, and we'll talk about the specific sword that Paul was talking about. Let us pray. Father, here we are in this place. We thank you for everything you do for us. We thank you for this moment in time. And we just ask that you would touch our hearts in a special way. And Lord, that you would reveal to us what we need to know, not just in our intellect, but in our spirit. We ask that in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Greek word that's translated sword there, I want you to know, would tell you about a sword that really caused a lot of fear in the minds of those who heard it. This sword was an exceptionally brutal weapon. Although it could be up to 19 inches long, most often it was shorter. It was like dagger type sword. It was like a dagger type sword. And you know when you got a dagger, you insert it in to the victim at close range. And this was a kind of sword that we're talking about. It was used in close combat. It was razor sharp on both sides. Think about that. All of these uh, characteristics, by the way, would tell you about a sword that was very deadly. It was a sword that people were frightened of. It would really afflict a wound that was far greater than and worse than any other sword that a Roman soldier might have. 
even though those other swords, not counting the one they practice with, but the other swords certainly were deadly. This was the most deadly of them all. And by Paul using this particular word in Ephesians 6, 17, what is he saying? Well, he's saying that God has given the church of the Lord Jesus Christ a weapon that is scary to the devil and his forces. Isn't that pretty neat when you think about it? That God is giving you that kind of weapon. And why was this weapon so horrific to the powers of darkness? The reason was because it was razor sharp. And it really had the power to really slash all the demonic forces that it would be used against, okay? So let us take a step further because I think we've got to really understand what it's saying here, all right? Because we've talked about the physical sword and we wanted to talk about the spiritual sword. And when you think about it, I want you to look at the word of God up here at the next thing that we will put up here. It says this, notice that this verse calls it the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We have that word, word underlined, okay? And that term word, it's taken from the Greek word rhema, which is a word God speaks specially to us relating directly to a problem or challenge we are facing. Let me say this today. There's people in this audience, would, if they were honest, you know what they would say? The word of God doesn't work for me. Any of you got enough testimony fortitude to raise your hand that you think that way sometimes? That it just doesn't work for you? I see hands. I really do. There's a reason for that. And that's what I want to share with you when we talk about this sword today. Because the Word of God tells us that it really is a sword that is dynamic and powerful. Okay. Now look at the latter part of that. That may not seem to make much sense. Rhema, which is a word that God speaks specially to us relating directly to a problem or challenge we are facing. Maybe another way to say it, it's a specific word that God gives you for a specific situation at a specific time. Okay? Amen. We're not talking about a new Bible. We're not talking about that at all. Let me just explain a little bit further, okay? Notice, if you will, up here, there's a couple of verses that we need to look at. Matthew 4.4. 4. Remember what is happening in the first part of this chapter? Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights, okay? And he needs to answer the devil. And the Bible makes it very plain here in verse 4. Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word or rhema that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let me just show you the latter part. Actually, the tense is, that is proceeding from the mouth of God. It, in other words, it's something that is happening right now. Again, I want you to know a little bit about Jesus. Did he know the Old Testament? Did he? Do you realize that Nazareth was a large enough city that they would have what they called the house of the book? And you would find that the people in the temple, those uh, elders, they would come and they would teach children. Jesus probably would be taught from age 6 until age 10. You know what the main textbook was? It was the Old Testament. Do you realize that they would memorize most of that? And so, what we're seeing here is this. Jesus is in a time in which he needs a specific word for a specific situation in a specific place. Okay? He's being tempted. Okay? Now, he could have grabbed any verse in the Old Testament, but guess what? The Spirit of God quickened a verse to him. Okay? When it says proceeding out of the mouth of God, that means God was speaking a word down in his spirit, in his heart, that he could then speak to the devil. Are you hearing that? That's what really was going on, okay? And this is what God wants to give you and me. You know, we, we, we want to have formulas. Well, oh, well, I should say this and say that and say this. 
You gotta wait on God. You gotta listen to God. He he always has a specific word for a specific situation you're going through. And he'll give it to you if you take time to wait on God. But you know, most of us, all we want is something academic. We want to read a book and, oh, I should say this and I should say that. That's not the way it works. It really isn't. Now, let me just say, and you need this in, in the questions I have in your bulletin, because first of all, you do have a definition of rhema. But rhema is a quickened word. Jesus had the written word, but the Spirit of God, the Father himself, God himself spoke a word by the Spirit into his heart, which was a quickened word. Amen? And that's what we need to really, really grab hold of, because this is what God really, really wants to do for you and me. And then you look at Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes. I tell you, faith comes, hallelujah, to your heart and my heart. But how does it come? By hearing. It's not just talking about hearing with my natural ears. It's talking about hearing with my, the ears of my spirit, okay, and hearing by the word, the rhema of God. In other words, that special word, that quickened word that we are given by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. I tell you, we, we all want to have a rhema word it, all the time, but I'm here to tell you it comes as we wait in the presence of God. And you know, God just begins to do something awesome down deep inside of you. Now let me make it even more practical to you than what I've done so far. You're praying about this given situation, okay, when suddenly a Bible verse rises from within your heart. In that moment, this is what you know. You know that God has supernaturally made you aware of a verse that you can stand on and you can claim for that particular situation that you find yourself in. When that happens, the Holy Spirit has put within your hand, hallelujah, a sword. Can you say amen? He's put a sword right in your hand. And how wonderful that is. A spiritual dagger that you can insert into the heart of the enemy and bring about his defeat in your situation, in your circumstance. Boy, I'll tell you, that's enough to shout right there. I, I'll tell you what, it really, really is. If we wait on God, God, God has always got an answer in the specific verse that will tear that devil up. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it'll tear him up, okay? Now, I want us to look at Hebrews 4.12, the kind of tie this together a little bit because well, what I've already shared with you, I, I feel this passage ties right in, okay? And if you'll note up here, Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, okay? I want you to notice that phrase, two-edged sword, okay? Because it appears all over the New Testament. And for instance, I want you to note where it appears in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 16, and it says, he, speaking to Jesus, he had in his right hand, how many stars? Seven. Okay, I want to make sure you weren't sleeping. Out of his mouth went what? A sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Okay. Now, why would Jesus have, have a sword in his mouth? It says this two-edged sword came out of his mouth. Shouldn't the sword have been in his hand? I would think that that's where it should be. But it's not. It's in his mouth. That's rather strange, isn't it? But I want you to understand something. Two edges taken from a Greek word. You've got two Greek words put together, so you've got a compound word, okay? And when you put these two words together to form a compound word, okay, or compounded one, it describes something that is two mouth, mouthed. I got to get the ED on the end. It's mouth with ED on the end. You got it? Okay. 
Now, does that seem strange to you? I'll tell you what, it does. Okay. So why would the Bible, notice up here if you would. So why would the Bible refer to the Word of God repeatedly as a two-edged sword or literally a two-mouthed sword? Hmm. Well, we're talking about a sword that has two cutting edges. Would you say amen to that? So this means it cuts both ways, all right? And I want you to know when it's used against the devil, it does awesome damage against him, terrible damage against him. After you receive a quickening, a qu in other words, a word that is quickened by the Spirit, guess what you need to do? You need to meditate on it. You need to think about it and meditate on that word. And guess what? It will suddenly release power in you, just like it releases power in me. And you know what happens after a while? When that word stays in there and marinates and you meditate on it, you want to say something, don't you? You want to declare what God has said to you. You wanted to say it out loud. You wanted to say what God had said down deep within. You wanted to release it out of your mouth. And when you did that, I want you to know, those powerful words were sent forth like a mighty blade against the powers of hell. Hallelujah. These forces of hell that have been arrayed against you, your family, your business, by the way, your ministry, your finances, your relationships, by the way, your body, what I want you to note is this. First, that quickened word came out of the mouth of God. Now remember, we're not talking about another Bible. We're talking about the written word becoming the quickened word. Are you with me? Amen? It's quickened to your heart and mind. And by the way, when you look at that, certainly that's one edge of the sword. The second edge of the sword was added when the word of God proceeded out of your mouth. Then it became a two-blade word. Hallelujah. I want you to know it remains a one-bladed sword when it's just in your heart. You need to say it out. You know, God has spoken to you so many times from his word. And it's down in there, but it, you don't do anything with it. So you got one blade, but God says there's another blade. That's when you open your mouth. And you begin to share the word of God. You begin to speak it out. Amen. I, I, I believe there's people that need healing in their body that have waited on God. They have had God bring or rise up a scripture inside of them. Or while they were reading the word, he quickened that word to them. But that's as far as it got. So it remained, it only, remained only one bladed. He wanted you to open your mouth and say it. Now, I do have an issue with people that just have formulas. The way it's taught sometimes. Oh, just confess the word, confess the word. I do have an issue with that. And I know I'm going against the way some of you think, and that's okay because I'm the one standing up here today and you're not. <laughs> when you stand up here, you can say it a different way. It's got to be down in your heart. It's got to be more than in your brain. It's got to be down inside. And when it gets down inside, you say it. And when you say it, I want you to know the power of God is released. And you have a two-edged sword and you cut the devil to pieces. Hallelujah. That's what happened there when Jesus was being tempted. For 40 days and 40 nights. I'll tell you what. I wish you could have seen that devil when he f left Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> and talk about a devil being beat up. <laughs> Later on, he's going to be really defeated when Jesus died on the cross but was raised from the dead and then ascended. Hallelujah. 
going right up through that second heaven where the devil was and where Jesus sat down on the right hand of the Father, all things being put beneath his feet. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Boy, I can get excited about that. You see, when you're confronted, and every one of you will be, you see, my, my job is to equip you. My job is not only to preach, but it's to teach you and to equip you. I want to see the body of Christ rise up. I want to see it rise up in this church. I want to see it rise up in this community. I want to see it rise up nationally and internationally. I want to see the body of Christ begin to enter into their inheritance and to see them strong in the Lord and the power of his might, okay. I'm here to tell you, God wants to do something in your life and in mine. Can you say amen? amen. You see, when a rhema word, and now that's a quicken word, okay. How many heard that? It's a quicken word. When it fills your heart in the very beginning, in your mind, and then when it comes out of your mouth, it's described as a two-mouthed sword. That's what it's really described as. And that's what God wants you to see. Now, how about you today? When you take the Word of God, I believe one of the things you should pray for is what Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus, that they would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. How many know all truth is grounded in the person of Jesus Christ? It really, really is. This is what we need. And when you find yourself in a given situation, I want you to pray about it. I'm, I'm encouraging you to say, Lord, I, I need a quickened word. I need a, I need a ray of word in this situation. Because some of us are tossing the word around and the devil isn't affected at all. And you say, well, I don't understand that, Pastor, because what I hear on television and other places is different than that. Well, you go right ahead and listen to them on television if you want, but I'm here to tell you the truth. And the truth is you need to get the word inside of you because it's been quickened by the Holy Spirit inside of you. Amen? Too many of us, we just want to have our devotions. You know what it is. Well, let me read my verses today. Oh, praise God. I'm not saying the Spirit can't speak to you and give you a quickened word, but too often, hey, man, I did my job. And yet, we're in defeat. And yet, we're being overcome. And yet, we don't see the glory of God get it come into our circumstances. I'm here to tell you when the enemy comes in and then remember in the Hebrew language punctuation wasn't there but I believe the way you can translate it when the enemy comes in then like a flood the spirit of God raises up a standard because he is always greater than what comes against the people of God can you say amen he lifts up a victorious banner so that we can walk in victory, hallelujah. A victory that he gives us. A victory you can't earn. A victory that's a gift. Oh, praise God. And sometimes our prayer life isn't much. And I'm not, listen, I'm not up here looking to, I, I've had to learn this myself. I had to learn it through hard times. I had to learn it when, you know, I wondered, does this work? Okay. But I had to learn to get in his presence. And I had to learn to look at the Holy Spirit as my senior partner and say, look, I'm only a junior partner. You've got to help me out here because I need a quickened word. And Lord... He would impress a verse on me. He would quicken it down. I, I would sense it down. I'd begin to meditate. Boy, something was happening inside of me. You see, before that which is external changes, something internal needs to happen in you and me. And that's what was happening. Something down deep in. It was build it up, build it up until I opened my mouth. 
I had the one blade down in there, hallelujah. But I needed a second blade. I needed to open my mouth and speak the word of God. And when I did, I want you to know, it was just like when Jesus spoke to the devil many, many centuries ago out there in the wilderness. And when he heard that word, I'll tell you what, he backed up, hallelujah. He knew, he knew he was defeated in that given situation. Even though I may not have seen things change immediately, he knew that. Because faith cometh. It cometh, it cometh by hearing. And sometimes I hear it with my natural ear before I hear it with my, the ears of my spirit. But it cometh by hearing that rhema word. And when people preach, and sometimes even through prophecy, there comes, there comes this quickened word. Not sometimes, but if it's true prophecy, you know, it, it, it's a quickened word that you can grab hold of. Now, there's times a rhema word comes this way. God wants you to go t to a certain place to live. Obviously, I don't, I don't find Pennsylvania in this Bible at all. Or I don't find Virginia. I don't find uh, <laughs> New York State. Or I, I don't find Harrisburg or whatever, you know. But he... He will speak to you, but always when he does talk about things that aren't really in the word because it is in the area of guidance, it's always in accord with God's word. It never, never violates the word of God. It never, never does. Now, if you would today say, I'm in the school of the Holy Spirit, and when you realize you're in that school, he wants to teach us. He really, really does. I'm here to tell you, he's got a word for every problem you have today. He's got a word for every situation you have today. And right now, I believe he's trying to get you to say to him, oh, give me a quickened word in this given situation, this circumstance. And he wants you to get it down deep inside. And then, hallelujah, as you meditate on it, it's going to just grow inside till you start talking. Hallelujah. And when you start talking, I want you to know it will be a release of the power of God that's going to change things. Really, it's going to change things. Can you say amen? Same way with healing try so hard to get healed we memorize all the verses we say all the verses we got our nice little formula and we got our nice little thing that we do but I'm here to tell you when you get that word that quickened word inside of you healing has begun we just need to say it and when we say it then something's going to happen because then you got the sword, hallelujah, two-edged for his glory. Now, you say, Pastor, you keep saying the same thing over and over. You want to know why? Because sometimes it's hard for us to get it. In the Old Testament, it said line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And I'm trying to get it through. At least you're in your frontal lobe so the Spirit's got something to work with. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Will you stand? How many can say God's spoken to your heart today? Has he spoken to your heart? Praise God. I want to say something to young people. Some of you have been raised in a Christian home. Some of you went to a Christian academy. I'm not against Christian academies, but I've seen that they don't always turn out the way you want it to turn out because the word becomes common. They've heard so much that after a while, we can think we know it all. But God wants us to really let the Spirit teach us. Can you
you say amen. Father, I pray for everyone that raised their hand, touch them today mightily. Oh, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you're doing something right now. I believe you're doing something, Lord. I believe it in Jesus' name. And Lord, help us. Help us to be equipped. Help us to be people of faith. To be people, Lord, that know how to use the sword against the powers of hell so that we can be victorious in every way. I ask that in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. you may be seated. I turn to my good friend Norma right now. I love Norma. Norma's my buddy. She really, really is. Norma and I have been together through thick and thin. And sometimes it may have seemed to her more like thin than thick. I, I don't know. But anyway, is there anything you want to say now? Because something's going to happen here in a little bit, and I'd probably let the cat out of the bag when I say that. But nonetheless, uh, we just love her, don't we? <laughs> I'm going to miss you a whole lot. You know that, don't you? I'm going to miss you big time because you're my buddy. We've been buddies for a long time. Remember my wife and I? She was your buddy and you were her buddy. We go back that far. Amen. Not as far back as the Revolutionary War, but we go, <laughs> we go, we go back a ways. <laughs> So I, I don't know, you want to wait until a little bit later to say whatever you want to say. Give her a mic, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> And I was not trying to disrespect you. Oh, I know you are. You're my pastor. I just couldn't understand what you I said. I know, but I'm letting people know that. I don't disrespect you. This is my comfort zone mm -hmm. here. You stand in the gap for me. Amen. But I know that... Um, I get out of line sometime, mm. but you taught me that anyway. Mm. And um, <laughs> there's, you know what, Pastor Hellman? I'm not going to go somewhere where somebody calls my family, prays with my family stands in the gap for me that many years that you have, that interacts with me, that I can call and wake up. I don't know if you like that part, but... <laughs> <laughs> you are my friend. You're not just my pastor. You're my friend. And I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss people in this church. Amen. That means a lot to me. But I want people to remember, Norma is a woman of God. Amen. I am a woman of God. You don't know what you know. You think, no, there's a lot of people don't know what God brought Norma Sutherland out of. And even though when I had took my eyes off of him, he never left me. I separated from him, but he still was there for me. You have always been there for me, and I thank God for that. And I just want the people in the church to know how much I love my heavenly father. Amen. That it's my heavenly father and he placed you in my life for a reason i have a lot of health problems so when they 
shut my, they're going to shut my trailer down. I figured I need to move on because I need um, somebody in my family to help Amen. take care of me. Amen. So. I, I taught her at the Bible Institute. No, we won't go into that because you uh, gave me, he gave me, he gave me uh, A for midterm and then gave me a B for the final. <laughs> and that was a roundhouse curve. I yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. What a friend we have in Jesus. Amen. All our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry. Oh, every, everything to God in prayer. Or when, listen, I'm forgetting the words, I'm forgetting the words, I'm forgetting the words, I'm forgetting the words, I'm forgetting the words. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee, take it, take it to the Lord in prayer. He will take and shield thee. I'm forgetting the words. Take it, take it to the Lord in and prayer. To my friends that have become my friends in this church. To the ones that spoke into my life, I thank you. To ones that don't know me personally, you don't, you, it's probably glad that you, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to miss Brookside Ministry. And I love, love everybody but Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> and that man over there, that guard, police guard over there. <laughs> <laughs> and that dear Dago, and I love his wife, but not him. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Bruce, his father, and stepfather-in-law. You know, there's some people in here I'm not uh, gonna miss, and especially Bernard. <laughs> People think because we're black we get along. <laughs> but that's all I'm gonna say, Pastor. Okay. Bernard knows I'm just joking Praise with him. God. Not, um, I'm not, I am. For, for you that have just started attending here and you don't know Norma, then you don't understand what she's saying, but she's a kidder. Uh, she has a lot of fun with people and all of that. And we do have a time of fellowship over here in Showers Hall, a meal in honor of Norma and you're all invited. We'd love for you to come and enjoy that meal. And uh, so we praise God for that. I don't know if we're to say something else about that because I only know a little bit. <laughs> so I would say, Lillian, is there something you would like to say? We need a mic. But she said million. She didn't say you. <laughs> we do need a mic. We're going to hear. Norma, we love you. 
And if you wouldn't mind leading us into the fellowship hall so we could spend some time with you and just honor you and love on you because you are so very important to all of us here. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, we would re encourage you that have just started coming to Brookside. If you can, and you may not have known about this, but if you can, come on 